This is the first computer session for spatially variant gratings. And all we're going to do in this session is write a MATLAB program to generate a single uniform planar grading. And this really is just to introduce grading vectors, how to program into MATLAB, how to display the gradings, and then we can move on in later sessions. So on the right, I have my command window, and on the left, I have my editor. And so I will immediately just start writing my program. I'll name this session1.m. And then what I like to do is I'll copy and paste it, or copy, save, and save it as session one. First thing in MATLAB is I will initialize everything. So initialize MATLAB. I will close any opening figure window with a close all, clear the command window with a CLC, and then the most important one is clear all, which clears all variables from memory. I'm going to use, in this case, just one unit, and I will call it degrees, and that's pi over 180. That will let us say in a command code like theta equals 45 times degrees, and I think it makes it a little bit more readable for, especially for those that don't think in terms of radians. Next thing we want to do is open a figure window. We're not going to display much of the command prompt here. We'll, we'll go back and forth a little bit. But for the most part, we're going to generate graphical output. And we want to make the figure window large. I'd like to give it a white background. And that is maybe more habit for me because I like to copy the figures, uh, the graphics out of the figures, and paste them into documents or a presentation that has a white background. So we'll open a figure window. And the first property we'll give it is color with a W. And that is saying we want that figure window to have a white background. Well, let's run it and see what happens. And we see we get this figure window that pops up with a white background. The next property we want to give it is units. We'll say normalized. We're going to open up a figure window but we don't want to have to know how large the screen is in terms of pixels. So if we just tell it to use normalized units, then the next thing will make uh, more sense. We're gonna make a window with outer position being 0, 0, 1, 1. That just lets us put in zeros and ones to cover the, the full screen. So if we run that, we should open up a figure window that covers the entire screen. And there we go. And that'll let us plot our graphics. We'll see them very large, and we can make out a lot of details. Next step in my code, after I initialize everything, I like to do something that I call a dashboard. And in the dashboard are all of the hard-coded numbers. These are the threes, sevens, 1.0s, 100s, all those, anything that's hard-coded. The rest of the code, no hard-coded numbers, just calculations. So this is our dashboard. And the first thing we'll need to define is the parameters describing our planar grading. Now this computer session, the assumption is that you already have been presented or listened to the theory. So I'm not going to explain what a grading vector is, but I will briefly mention how the parameters relate back to that theory. Sorry for the awkward pause, I had to answer the telephone. Anyway, the first parameter that we need to describe our, our grading is the period of the grading. So we'll just make that A, that is the period of our grading. We'll even give it a comment so we can remember that period of grading. Next thing, it'll have some angle. We can have a, a grading heading off in any direction. So let's define a theta. And maybe we'll make it 30 degrees. So we'll call that the slant of the grating. Uh, later on, we'll call it the orientation of the grating. We also need to define some kind of fill fraction. 
and let's just make it 0 0.6 just so it's not 50-50. And that'll be the thickness of the lines of the grating. How much of the grating is filled with the lines. And because I'm weird, I like to align my numbers. And that's all the parameters I can think of for now for a planar grating. We want to create an, an extended grating that's not just one period, but it's a grid that's maybe 10 periods by 10 periods large or something like that. So we need to define some grid parameters of how big our overall grating will be. The physical width, will let that be 10 periods wide. Physical height, again, 10 periods wide. And we want to define a resolution parameter of 10. And later on, this will be 10 points per period. And since our physical grid is 10 periods by 10 periods, the total number of points in our grid will be roughly 100 by 100. But we can control the resolution through this parameter. So that's it for the hard-coded numbers. And let's go to the next section. And this next section, we're going to calculate grid, calculate our grid. So this will be the number of points, the cell size. We'll create some vectors that tell us the positions of the points along the grid and stuff like that. So first thing is grid resolution. We know how big the cells will be in our grid. We're going to take the unit cell and divide it by that parameter n res. So for every period there will be 10 points on the grid. And that's pretty much a minimum for gradings to resolve them so that they look somewhat square. Same thing for y, a over n res. We won't need a dz because we're in two dimensions right now. We'll jump to three dimensions in a, a later computer session. So that tells us how large each cell on our grid is. Now let's figure out how many points there are. So we can make a guess as the physical width of the grid divided by the cell size to tell us how many points. However, this may not come out to be an integer quantity. It might be 99.5. So what we'll do is we'll use the function seal, which is short for sealing, which means we round up. So if that sx over dx was 99.5, it would now be 100. What I'll do now is recalculate the grid resolution as sx over nx. That makes sure that sx, nx, and dx are all consistent with each other. We'll do the same thing again for the y-axis. The number of points is sy over dy, and we'll, of course we'll round up to get an integer, and then recalculate. If we got a, a fractional quantity, we need to recalculate this, sy over ny. Okay, let's run it, make sure we don't have any errors close our figure window because we haven't even displayed anything yet. dx, dy, nx, ny. So exactly as we expected, a, a grid that's 100 by 100 points. Now for graphics, I like to calculate what I call axis vectors or the grid axes. And xa will be this array of numbers that will tell me the position of each point as we go horizontally across the grid. So 0, nx minus 1. I can't go 0 to nx because then this array would contain one more point than our grid contains. And then we multiply that array of integers by dx and that gives us this array of points telling us our positions. Now for a variety of reasons, mostly maybe because I'm weird, I like to center my x-axis around 0. It'll make a little bit more sense why we're doing this later on, but it's not necessary. We could not do this. I just like it because it's aesthetically pleasing. And we'll copy and paste this and do the same thing for the y-axis. So it's just centering it around zero. And then the last step, we're going to generate our mesh grid, which is an extremely useful command in MATLAB. If you haven't seen mesh grid, I definitely recommend poking around on the MathWorks website or online elsewhere to learn mesh grid. I'm not going to explain it here, but we're going to use it. 
the, the short answer is it takes these one-dimensional arrays and creates two-dimensional arrays across the grid such that X comes out where each point in X is its position in X and each element in Y is its position in Y. So at this point we have our, our grid calculated. We're ready to construct our planar grading. So we'll go to the next section of our code and we'll call this something like generate uniform planar grating. And I use uniform because later on we will be spatially varying these planar gratings, but at this point it is uniform. The first thing we want to do is calculate our grading vector function. And as you know, it has an X and a Y component. So we'll calculate the X component first. And it has a magnitude of 2 pi over the period. And the X component will say cosine theta. So that means the Y component is the same thing. However, we will use a sine theta. That now gives us a vector pointing along the angle theta with a magnitude 2 pi over the period, which is exactly how a grading vector is defined. Next thing we'll do is calculate the analog grading. Calculate analog grating. And we'll call that GA for grading analog. And that's just cosine. And remember from the theory, cosine of k dot r. A dot product, k dot r, in this case will be kx times x plus ky times y. There is not a kz times z because we're just in two dimensions here. So kx times x, the mesh grid x, plus ky times y. So that is our dot product. Okay, at this point, let's take a look at what we have. So I'll create a new section. And we will call this show grading. And we want to show the analog grading to make sure this is running right. What we could do is run it. We haven't displayed anything yet, but we're not getting any errors in the command window. So that at least means we have a good chance of no mistakes here. We're going to generate two planar gradings here, what we'll call the analog grading and then what we call the binary grading. So the analog grading we just calculated, that's GA. But since we want to display two things, we'll use the subplot, one to one. So in the left half of our figure window, we're going to show the analog grading. And we'll use the command P color, XA, YA, and GA. Now let's take a look at what this does. We see a few things we don't like about that. Well, one, we can tell we have a planar grading. That's good, we like that. But there's a bunch of black lines in here that I tend not to like. And when you have a lot of points on a grid, this comes out just looking black. So we wanna get rid of that. And also notice we have a square grid, but this is not coming out square. This is more rectangular-ish. And when we're dealing with gradings and spatially variant lattices, it, it can look really weird if you don't have equal proportioning. So the first thing is shading interp. That will get rid of the black lines. We'll give it a color bar so we know what values the different colors are. And then an axis equal tight. Let's not do the tight at first. Let's see what happens. So notice we do have a square region now. However, we have these ugly white regions left over from when we did the axis equal. So that's what the tight does. It gets rid of those white regions. And there it is, there is our, our, our planar grating. And maybe we'll give it a title. And this is our analog grating to differentiate it from the binary grating, which we're about to do next. So we'll run it again. And there is our analog grating. 
And notice it's going off at an angle of 30 degrees above the x-axis running horizontally. And it has a period of 1. And we can look down here, 0 to 1, and we can see, yep, just about a period of 1. We can do that visually. Now we want to calculate the binary grading. So we need a threshold. And what we'll say is every value above the threshold is a 1, for example. Every below will be a 0. Or maybe we do it the other way around. So we need some threshold value. If we have a cosine function that's between negative 1 and 1, there's a neat way to estimate what that needs to be. I forget whether you call it F or FF up top for fill fraction. FF. So we want to use FF down here. So if FF is the fill fraction, GTH is the threshold that we need to use on that cosine function to realize whatever fill fraction we wanted. So grading binary is grading analog greater than GTH. So in this case, what we've done is every number in GA that is greater than this threshold value will be 1, and everything else will be 0. So the only thing left to do is to show the binary grading. So show binary grading. And we'll have to name our section to show grade tings since we're showing more than one. We'll subplot this to 1, 2, 2, so it'll be on the right-hand side. Instead of GA, we want GB. J enter, and we'll name it binary grading. And let's see what happens. Oh, some kind of error. Let's go see what happened. Okay, it says value must be numeric. P color likes numbers to come in, and we have made it a boolean. So this is a pretty common mistake for me to make. And so we will say double. And that should fix it. And now we see our planar grading. And you'll notice that the, the red lines occupy 60% of the area over here. And we can control that now through the FF parameter, the fill fraction. Let's go make it something, something really small, 0.1. So we should get skinny red lines. Very skinny red lines. And notice how pixelated that looks. If that bothers us, we'll go increase this end res. So now we'll be using 20 points per period. That might look a little bit better. And we do see nice, smoother lines. Let's make that fill fraction a bigger number now. 7.5. They should be pretty fat and occupying 75% of the total area, which we, we definitely are. So we're controlling fill fraction. Let's change the angle. Instead of theta being 30, maybe it's 120. And here we're pointing at 120 degrees off of the horizontal axis, rotating counterclockwise. And so let's change the period to see what happens. Now, if we just plug in a different period here, we're not going to observe any changes. And why is that? Because we've always made our grid 10 periods wide. So instead, of making the grid 10 periods, let's make an absolute value of 10. If we run it, we should see the same thing. But now if we adjust the grading period, we'll see the differences here. Let's make the grading period 3. And we see a much longer grading. And we can even make it shorter. How about a 0 0.7? And we see we have a very fast grating. So that is it for this session. We defined a grating vector. We calculated it across a two-dimensional grid. We calculated the grating, and we displayed it. And we had both the analog and the binary grating. And these concepts will come up in every single one of the computer sessions that we do that follows this.